Hello and welcome back to another episode of Boys Gone Wild. There's been many episodes where I've said they're special episodes and then regretted it immediately. But this is not one of them. This is genuinely a very special episode because I've got my, fr- my friend. Not yet. Not yet. Nearly. Yeah. Uh, Tom Gray. Thomas. Uh, Thomas Gray. Thomas J. Gray. Yeah. Thomas J. Gray on Instagram. Yeah. Um, it's actually Tom Gray 87 on Instagram if you're going to be particular. 97? 87. The year I was born. Oh, 97 is the year I was born. Mental. 10 years younger. So. Yeah. Probably um, look, if you were to guess, you'd probably look at you and be like older. Because you've yeah. got more, I can, I can grow facial hair, but you're That's the cool. insult on me. So the insult on you is that you're older than me. Mm. And the insult on me is that you wouldn't be able to tell. And Yeah, wouldn't be able to tell. No, the insult on, is, isn't an insult. It's just you're sounding me. so far away from the mic. It's like so boldly. I'm used to sh- um, more professional mics. Yes. Usually, <laughs> usually it's just over there and it just picks up like that. <laughs> sorry. Is this, yeah. is this? It's, uh, let's, yeah, that's, that's good. Okay, so I'm so sorry. Do you want me to do all of that again? No, 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 no. That's all fine. That's all fine. It just, it, it, I, I think it's more powerful sounding like you're sort of heckling me from the back of the room. Yeah. Um, it's an impressive, mighty impressive studio, by the way. How, how much is the rent on this huge? So he's trying to. He, he, the comment he's making is the fact that this isn't a studio. This is actually my bedroom, and the actual um, the problem with interviewing <laughs> um, stars that I admire in the industry is. It's an incredibly intimate thing. Stars. Uh, when you have someone come on the show, it looks like on YouTube, like you're going to come on a big professional studio, but you are. I, I sleep half a meter away from where we're talking now. Yeah. You know, I've just moved my dirty washing basket over there. So it's quite like. I sleep on the floor at my parents' house at the moment. So, <laughs> so you, don't yeah. need to, you don't need to defend yourself. <laughs> I was watching this, I was watching an interview with um, your girlfriend. Yes. And um, I thought this was an apostrophe. Really? Yeah, and I was going to comment on it, but it's not. It's a bolt, isn't it? Cause well, you're going you're gonna to do a YouTube comment, or are you, gonna, I, I was, you saving it up till you got on air? No, I was going to do a YouTube comment, actually. That's funny, isn't really? it? Yeah, I was going to do a real mean one, but like, mm, what was in what, saying time? that I'd got... Yeah, because I've, I've just you, spent the If money. you're going to call yourself a writer in stand-up, <laughs> learn the rules, learn the grammar, <laughs> learn the grammar of your art. Um, but yeah, so this isn't the first time I've met Tom Gray, because though uh, we'd planned for him to come on the podcast, I wanted to meet you first, because I think... The fact you don't want to meet someone for the first time on a podcast, no. and you don't want to—I don't want to invite you to my house, no. take you up to my room, and then do it. It's just that's happened to me before. When I first started comedy, I got a, I got a call, I got a, a message on Facebook from someone saying that he was doing a Radio Four series, and whether I wanted to do one of the voices. So I said, Yeah, absolutely, okay. of course. BBC. Well, well, he, so, yeah, yeah. Well, he said. To be fair, he didn't say BBC Radio Four. He said Radio Four. So maybe it's my fault. But I went to meet him, and he showed up like an hour late. No, he rang the night. <laughs> he, he rang the night before, said it was cancelled, and then uh, and then the next day when I was supposed to be there, rang and said, "Where are you?" I was like, "You told me it was cancelled." He goes, "Oh, is it this time?" Sorry, I thought it was the other time. So like, oh, I'm so sorry. I was a little naive boy, so I sort of sprinted there. You're quite a polite man. So. Very polite man. Yeah, raised yeah. well. <laughs> and anyway, uh, sprinted there, met him. And he was, he was sort of, he had these ticks, which yeah. isn't, uh, yeah, is, no, no, is no, it still, no, is that no, better? I'll I, just, sorry, yours as well. Yeah, just, yeah, don't worry, I don't yeah, want to mean yeah, to. Yeah. No, don't the whole worry, point don't, was I wanted, didn't want to take the legs out. Yeah, yeah. So well, but you've done it, me. so. Well, anyway, the, the way, the, 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 what happened is, is that this guy, um, he then took me into his a house, which ended up being a house his grandmother had left him um, very recently. And so it's full of all this stuff. And I asked, warning signs were going. And he took me through into a bedroom, probably a quarter of the size of this. And it was a microphone in the middle of the bed, and I had to sit on the bed with him. Oh. And then it turned out there were no other actors, and it was just the two of us. And he was like, um, you're going to be playing Dave, and I'm going to do all the other voices. Oh. The year is 2047. The British <laughs> government has... And I literally, I'm like... Sh- <laughs> it's like Partridge when he goes into his mega fans. And I had to do the whole thing. There's a recording of it somewhere. It's the scariest. It was the scariest. Yeah, it was, it was, it was scary. So what, he Facebook <sighs> messaged you. Is that clear enough? <sighs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He Facebook met you. Well, that was what you did, wasn't it? Facebook messaged. I once got Facebook message from Daisy May Cooper about ten years ago asking me to be in something, and I didn't reply. So, but you did reply to the Radio Four guy. But I did reply to the Radio Four guy. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of weird stuff like that in 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 comedy because you're all trying to get stuff made, and it's like the weird casual lines. Like we 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 set up on. A, well, firstly. There's still a lot more questions on this Radio Four thing. So he's mm-hmm. why did he say Radio Four? He just said Radio. He just said Radio Four. What, what of course, what he meant was I've written a thing. I'm going. Like, I'm going to send it to Radio Four, and they're definitely going to pick it up. It was 21 years old. He just assumed that's how it worked. Is I, it out I on the internet, well. or did it never get released? No, it was. But it was about David Cameron being a, a robot. Oh gosh, I hope he's not watching. It. It'd be horrible if he's watching this. In I don't know, man. I think he's he's earned he's earned a bit of. 
Well, yeah, but am I mocking? Yeah, probably am. He won't be watching. I can't remember his names. Doesn't matter. I'm not really mocking it. You're talking about an emotional, traumatic story about it was being emotional... mistreated in the industry. Yeah, and finding myself within half an You're hour. The victim. He's not meeting a guy and then being sat on his bed, talking to him whilst he's doing a robot impression did of David good, Cameron. Did you have? Did you have a good uh, yeah. performance? Oh, I nailed it. Yeah, absolutely nailed it. Did you smash out of the park? Smash yeah, out of the it, park, it, yeah. As, as nervous as you were, you're yeah. still when it comes as soon as lights action. Tom yeah, Graham. I was a I was a Hoover. I was some sort of Hoover. It was it was on these wacky Radio Four things. But you how know? much do you go into? Because this is like one of the skills that I respect about your end of comedy being an actor is their kind of ability just to like turn it on mm -hmm. to be a completely different person. So were you nervously? Going around the room thinking, oh God, I, oh, this is, I'm being awkward and polite. And then I, action, you're like, me, me, me. I was, ple pre yeah, pretty much. So. <laughs> oh, I, can I sit here? Can I sit here? Yeah, okay. The, I am from the galaxy, Zarlon. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, oh, you see, you've heard it then. You've heard, <laughs> the greatest, um, the greatest role I was playing was someone that was comfortable in his environment. That's all my focus mm -hmm. was going on that. And, um... I usually get told I, start, I sit too close to these things and get told to pull away. Not in this studio, babes. Mm, it's it's confusing, this. isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was, that was yeah. I can't remember what we were talking about. <coughs> so it just keeps cutting the legs out um, whenever I move the mic. Mm -hmm. But we're, t we're talking about the, the, the Radio 4 play about David Cameron. Do you remember anything else about the plot of that? Um, no, it was David. It was, it was very David Cameron, George Osborne heavy because it was 2010. Yeah. And I think um, there's some sort of virtual reality Nick Clegg in there, perhaps. But he's no, I can't. Make it in. He's got to make it in, hasn't he? He was he was crucial at that point. Well, um, I think that period of um, you were you were what two then? Oh, very good. Uh, are you that <laughs> Sorry, one nil. <laughs> 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 um, no, that was. I feel that was like a good time for comedy. Uh, was the the kind of nothing years of um, Cameron Miliband. Um, and Clegg mm -hmm. where everyone was the same so yeah. there was so much room for satire Yeah, like that was the easiest time for satire you well, could have been like oh Cameron's a goose and, and Nick Clegg's an egg and it's yeah. like that's satire but yeah. now well, you can't do satire everything was sort of fine wasn't it, it yeah was like, so you could just like it was yeah, like you're, obviously you're a, a huge economic crash that caused everything that we're going through now but yeah. we didn't know it then so it was like oh Look at how Miliband eats his bacon sandwich. Yeah, that was like the There's dream period. There's a week, week's worth of material there. And you you could have done so much because that was when you were... I know, didn't I And do this it. is my turn and I don't have it as easy. No, um, you, you can't say anything. I never did say anything that I couldn't say. It was never my thing, really. Yeah, because we, we actually... Well, before we get into that, because um, the, the, we met on what is... Bumble. B Bum well, no, this is what I was trying to say. We went on a comedy man date, which I've had a couple of. Who else have you been going on comedy mandates with? Uh, I had a very brief comedy mandate with Sean Walsh. Oh, yeah. Um, but it, because he's a bigger name than you, it was a shorter mm -hmm. amount of time. Mm -hmm. Like, we spent mm -hmm. a long time together. Mm -hmm. Sean Walsh, he was... So am, I, am I acting like that didn't affect me? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. Even though it's obviously, obviously um, true. Uh, How's his dance? How, he, he's the one that danced on... Um, <laughs> danced on telly, is he? Is that him? Yeah he's, a, yeah, he's a big... They know who he is. So okay. You don't need to, yeah, don't yeah, need to explain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sean Walsh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You I know, know, you no, know. I know. I just wanted to reference that little moment in Tom television, Gray, television history. Uh, Thomas you Gray. who you are? My name, is Thomas, <laughs> my name is Thomas Gray, and um, I suppose I've been a... You're like someone a poor you've, man, you've, Sean Walsh. I'm a poor man, Sean, <laughs> Sean, Walsh, Sean Wolf. I don't know who he is. Um, Horatio's looked up to me for, for some time, haven't you? I did, yeah, yeah, I did. And um, I'm also I'm also an excellent history teacher. yeah. Yeah, and I like football. That's all they need to know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the comedy mandate is one of my favourite parts of this uh, industry, which I don't know how much it happens in other things where you somehow end up following another comedian online and then you vaguely feel like you know the person mm -hmm. because you know their sort of, you know vaguely what their brain chemistry is like or the kind of, you know what they're, what hole they're trying to fill and they're mm -hmm. so you kind of feel a connection with them mm -hmm. and they're doing stuff where they're putting out a lot of vulnerable stuff so you feel you know them and you don't know them at all and then you ask to meet up and within one meeting you feel like you know each other very well when you don't actually know each other very well and I find those quite a, quite a funny thing that happens quite a lot where I don't know if you can you can't just be like in in a normal for normal people on normal Instagram you can't be like I, I like your vibe 
do you want to hang out? That's super weird. <laughs> but in comedy, it's like seen as part of. The I job. still f- I feel nervous doing it though because oh, you still get like, but it's like a date feeling. It is. Yeah. You get like the sweaty palms. You're like, yeah. is he gonna? Yeah. I didn't get that with you though. Did you not? No, Did you not? No, no. <laughs> Nothing. Forgot your, forgot your name before. You should... <laughs> yeah. No, no, of course not. Of course not. Um, but yeah, because th- th- we. We've already done very intimate things because we also watched an England game together. We did, and we're going to watch the one tonight. Was I, I was I was tonight. I taller than you thought? Yes. People always, yeah, yeah. Was I taller than you? Thought? You're actually shorter than I thought because I thought you were really tall. I, I think, it's but we're about the same height. But it's be. probably because my comedic my comedic yours self. Is sh- I'm, an alpha, up. I'm an alpha chat. Yeah, mine's shoulders down. Your all of your characters uh, are like, oh, so that is it. you're like cucky losers. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And then mine is sort of like taking the, the kind of. Looking at the world and thinking, what do I think? Mm-hmm. And then, then devastating social critiques. It's, 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 Devast- so, it's so devastating. It's, well. That's what I'd say. Should, if you would describe me. Like you or, or, or am I good with them on? It's completely, this is, it's up to you. You can put them however you feel. Just thought you look quite cool with the double. You, this, they also always suit. This is how Andrew wears his. You can do double. Um, nah, it's, come on, we'll cut that. We'll, cut um, that. we'll, we'll edit that out. Yeah. We'll edit that out, that out in post. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so we've already done fairly intimate things. Uh, watching an England football game with a stranger, I feel, is something that's quite a, like bonding, a nice is a, a nice thing. And then this is coming out. We're going to watch the England Germany game in two three hours. <gasps> this comes out on Friday, so they already know what's happened by quite a while. Mm. Everything's been said about it. So we have this naivety. So I'm going to make my prediction now. So what's the date? Well, now? you're going to make your prediction now. Did you see how quickly that I caught that? That was Spider-Man, like, yeah. Because this is, watch is broken. I refuse to accept it's broken. Yeah, so I it keeps that. popping out. I get that. And it's gold, so I just want to show people. <laughs> Here, here's my prediction, right? You've got to remember, people are watching this. They know what it is. Exactly, but I want them to be impressed with me. Not to. I don't, they're not yeah. joining in. Is he right? They're, they're going to be like, whoa, that's impressive. 3-0, Sterling twice, Calvin Phillips once. Imagine if that happens. Okay, so England, Germany. You do one as well. I'm going to say KG. It's a KG affair. I'm saying England go up, Germany equalise, one all, extra time. England win 2 1 in extra time. So we're going to win. So that's. I, I, we've, you've got to think that. I'm very cynical about England, but in the run up to a big game, you can't be betting against us. No, I agree. We've got the history. You can't be betting against us. You have to... We're a toxic... It's a, to, it's a very toxic country, very toxic team. Game day, forget all that. All right? We're here to win. We're here to close the borders. You described it as being like the purge for patriotism. Yeah, I think being an England fan and how I view myself is we all agree that we're not a huge fan of elements of England as a country specifically England like specify specify specifically England you know Britain global Britain Scotland you can have a Scotland tattoo that's cool Welsh yeah. tattoo it's yeah. like how authentic and hard that is because well, they're, 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 these places are perfected utopias yeah everything's perfect in those and countries like but they, in England everything's there's so much that's wrong but in those places it's, it's fine yeah Scotland that's how I feel yeah, and Scotland and Wales, it's like they, even Cornwall slightly, yeah. you know, they so, sort of avoid all of the money they made from slavery and the British Empire, and they just act like, well, it was your idea to England, and it was like, all every, everything gets dumped on England's world step, sort of rightfully so. But when it comes to international football tournaments, no matter how progressive and woke you are in your everyday life, no matter how right on your politics is, as soon as that England top gets pulled over my head and oh. it's kickoff, it's over. I'm slept. That's it's when you were. It's over. It's completely over. Like, You're I, slept. I, well, as opposed to woke, I'm slept. I came up with it last night. <laughs> That's, I was just you being red pilled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I, with that England shot on, yeah. Probably. I'm asleep. I'm yeah. asleep. I'm fast asleep. I can't be held accountable for anything I do. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was asleep then, actually. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Have you got an England shirt? We should... Oh, I've got I've, no... I've, like... got, I've got my England shirt. Have you got two, perhaps? No, I've got an Italia shirt. Mm. No. But I don't want to wear an England shirt for this because I I, I don't want people... Because it's not the perfect occasion. You've got an England shirt. England, Germany... Mm, nah, it's not... No, I'm going to wear it for the match. I'm not going to wear it for this podcast. I, I see, mean. I see. Because yeah, yeah, you're what you're watching is... It wouldn't make sense, yeah. Everyone's going to be talking about it all week. Yeah. You don't want to see... The pre-match build-up. Yeah, you're right. Three days after the match. No one wants that. Like, how horrendous is that? Yeah, it's like a, it's like a hangover. It's like seeing like a Glassbury 2014 like pamphlet 
which is telling you what's going on there. Six is that feeling <laughs> of like, oh, this is horrible when you say, like, the timestamps of when people are performing. It's like, this has all happened. Some of yeah. these people are probably dead now. I got lost at Glastonbury 2014. Oh, yeah? Yeah, completely and utterly lost. You, you give me that vibe yep. of a man, one who would end up in Glastonbury and when he's there would end up being lost. You yeah. really, lost at Glastonbury? Yeah. I had it's a very much a Tom Gray. I had a job once where I, t- I sold T-shirts for a band, and they were touring in America. And they and I got and I, I got um, the bus left at like two or something, and I was I was I was partying, um, by which I mean partying desperately trying to find out where how I was getting back to the yeah. bus, <laughs> and um, and yeah, got completely lo- got, got completely left, and then ended up going to the lost children's section because oh. it was the only place I could find anyone in authority, and they announced that I was lost over the tannoy, and so I was sat with like some. Oh, that's Little humiliating. America. It was very humiliating, yeah. Found, though, so... I know loads of people get lost at Glastonbury. It seems yeah. to be a real issue. Yeah, it's just too big. It's so big. I don't understand. It's, it's the appeal. It's too big. You can't see any of the acts. You can't see any of the acts. You go for a poo and you're nearly sick every single time. You is that not in... most big festivals? Or Probably. is it worse at Well, Glastonbury? yeah, but this one's worse. Is there so more you, shit? You're sat up there, the pile of poo's about here, so the splat can, there, it can reach. <laughs> and, then when you, and then when you're sat, you, you, your cubicle ends about here, so you're sort of on the loo nodding to some girl next to you whilst what? you can see everyone else. You can see? Yeah, you can it's see. It's like I, Roman times. I've got, a, I've, got a, I've got a big upper bottom. Well, I haven't actually, but yeah, I can see over the top. No, you're tall. You're not, not, not big. No, no, no. no. Yeah. Legs, legs up to here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like that on the <laughs> Rich, when you're shitting a glass of it's yeah, not yeah. ideal. Yeah, yeah, I don't want people to see that. <laughs> but um, it's horrid, and then you can't, and then by the time you've walked to somewhere, and then you, you sort of get in, and then you've got to go for a drink, and then you line up for drinks, so you miss the whole. I don't, I don't. I just, Do you I, like festivals? IPlayer. I like them on iPlayer, yes. Do you, so, but is this an issue with Glastonbury or festivals? Festivals. Okay. Yeah. Well, if you don't like festivals, you're not going to like Glastonbury. It's, it's yeah. dope because you've sold it very much. It's like, what even is Glastonbury? Yeah, yeah. If you're not, oh no, that wasn't me being so cool that I'm like, honestly, that festival is n- <laughs> yeah. no, no, just all of them. Oh, all I can't sell what tent. It's yeah. like, yeah, that's every festival. I can take a tent. I just can't take a tent in the morning when that heat. I could. So the, I, I went to Reading in 2013 when I was 16 after my GCSEs, mm-hmm. and it probably made me the man who I am today. Did you get A's or ones? Or B's? A's. It was ones? Like, yeah, they're now called ones and sevens. Is this sevens. some fucking like Tory shit? Yeah, oh, I don't this know. This is some like Toby well, back, Young. Saka the other this day. This is some like... Dominic Cummings sort of <laughs> yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Give them a number they won't understand yeah. and then it'll be even more meaningless. Yeah. But Saka got all ones. In his yeah, he's, he's got that uh, sight genius vibe. Yeah, or sevens or whatever it is. Um, but yeah, no, uh, after GCSEs, I went to Reading and um, took like pills for the first time with our whole year group and it was just an explosion of what life could be I, it was it was it was like my bar mitzvah that's <laughs> how i imagine bar mitzvahs are intended to be in the your Jewish whole faith. year group didn't go as like a, it wasn't a school trip <laughs> it group. was those teachers there was buses there was there was the whole the whole the whole deal yeah. um but yes uh tom gray if you don't already know is um uh, very very talented comedy actor but you 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 shot to, i'm sorry we're gonna have to talk about it but you shot to viral fame with the stag do video which i watched at school and liked very much mm-hmm. um and you but you went viral at a time like i've had two clips go viral on tiktok which means nothing but you went actually viral back when you it was like a proper viral thing wasn't it well it was it was when it was when it was a new word i think it was like it was a yeah. new thing maybe it was lad bible era it, what, yeah. that was when it was, they well, were it was, before, it was before that but then yeah, they yeah, Lab Bible then nicked it and shared it and got loads of views. Oh, really? And so, what were, were you at the time? <clears throat> were you just? Did you have any ambitions to be? Well, I so I so I I how did it work out? I'd started a postgrad at Durham, and my fa- I, I got Durham's where I'd gone to school. It's where I was from, and so I felt like I'd gone back in time a bit. And I'd, I was always writing. I was wanting to write, and then I took a job as an au pair in Battersea. Because oh, it was wow. a job where it went that I could... Was it a yummy mummy? Um, I, well, with respect, yeah, but yes. Battersea, Battersea, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but, uh, and um, yeah, did that because I, then in my head it meant I could write in the afternoons and do stuff and then have a job in the morning and evening. And then started doing, just started doing those videos. And um, the Oh, was there a lot other attempts? Well, I, 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 yeah, I did a bunch of like sort of, you know, to camera things and, um, and the only comments are like, uh, well, it was, you're, you're a fat spastic, was, was <laughs> and and then I realised it was uh, the only people watching it were my friends, and then I, 
and then I, I actually went on a stag. I, I went on a real stag do, my first ever one, and um, it was in the country, and there was no signal or anything, so I didn't have any. Was that was that filmed on a stag do? No, it was made up. It was just a made up thing. Oh. But then, but then, quite soon after, I went on a real one, and I was in the country and had no signal. And then, oh, when okay. we came back out, my phone. So I never know how it happened. I don't know. Oh, so you bit. weren't there because the no, reason just, why you didn't know how you got viral is because you were literally on a stag I was literally on a stag yeah. So when everyone's like, I wonder what he's doing now, you're doing exactly what everyone thought you <laughs> yeah, were doing, yeah, yeah, which yeah. was on a stag yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How much like the, the stag, how much? Well, uh, it's, I mean, it's not difficult to imagine a stag do, is it? Yeah. It wasn't the hardest thing in the world. It was pretty similar, I think. How did you I probably did get that yourself bit and tried... to that place? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It was weeks of. Um... <laughs> but yeah, we, but it's, yeah, it was a weird, I never. It was difficult to work out how to capitalise on it then. Yeah. There was no clear sort of path in how you right now do this, you do that. Now was, you'd be selling t shirts, you have your own fragrance. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the um I actually I got I, the other day in the pub, um this is um this is just bragging, I'm not gonna pretend it's not. This is what it's about, this yeah, section is the brag section. Okay, good. Oh great, okay, so I'll just bring out <laughs> yeah. But there was four lads that uh, I sort of bumped into walking through the pub and they sort of went a bit weird and turned and they all had uh, my face on their t shirt and it was the stag do like thing. So what's but but what's so frustrating about that is that I had probably four pounds fifty in my bank account at the time and was like struggling to like how am I going to get home tonight or whatever? And it's a, it's an not for money. No, but it's annoying. Thing. <laughs> like in my head, I thought if there's a situation in which someone's got your face on their t-shirt, you should have more money. You should, you've got some. You've got some money. <laughs> you've got some. Um. So so yeah. That is the problem with um, British comedy and sort of these sort of viral spurts is mm. people think if they know you, yeah, you must have money. And it's like we're all fucking broke yeah. as shit. It's but, like yeah. so few of us, and it's like. If what someone in comedy, through comedy, is making like thirty k a year, yeah, we're like they're smashing it. The way yeah. you, what, you know, have you ever seen a, 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 like a, one of your friends or someone you know in comedy who's probably making around thirty k a year in comedy? The way you think about that guy yeah. or girl is like fucking out. They're just fucking oh, they're ra- money to burn. <laughs> they're raking it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And so and and. Yeah, that's probably the thing that's a little bit annoying is that I never managed to sort of capitalise on that. But um, there's still, I mean, t- you just said TikTok. I don't know how TikTok works, but mm. is that worthwhile doing? Yes, you should definitely do but how, I don't. So how do you get followers? People. Well, the, the, the good thing about TikTok is it's like a viral making machine. No, but if I do a video, it's then, the, if it goes viral, it's then you being like, look at this. And then it's another video of someone going, look at these clowns. <laughs> and then yeah. someone else going, oh. <laughs> That, what, where's the value of that? And then you and go, then a song to that it. was and me. Yeah, yeah. It, well, that's the thing. No one knows who did that. It was about 50 different people. Yeah. I don't want to collaborate on that. You I want the credit it, for I it. Think, I think you slightly miss it. That, that doesn't happen that much. And most of the time, it's, I guess the, the problem you with... You share the, funny things, actually. You share, like, funny clips. Oh, TikTok is great. But then that's reality. You can't better those, like... That's it, the problem, is on the any internet thing, is do you sometimes feel when it's like you're trying to make stuff that you hope people share and goes viral and you, you craft and you use all of your comedic knowledge to make and you try your best and then you see like a fat person falling in a bin yeah. and you're like, well, I'll never, but it's not even, I'll never it, achieve that. It's, it's not even that. It's, it's Vicky Pollard as a character. How does that, how would she stand out when you can go on TikTok and see the actual Vicky Pollard's making funny video and, and doing like, or video of the, yeah. or, you know, like it's, it's made it, I don't know, it's made it a bit difficult. But we, when, with the Stadu video, did you, how did it feel that sort of, um, when it started going viral did, at, at the time? Because I don't, and it wasn't when there was like lots of those sort of things happening. No. Uh, how does it feel? Uh, it made me think that um, within six months, if I just write something, I'll have a TV show. Yeah. Uh, probably, which obviously is totally naive, but, um, it was, I don't know, it was strange. It's it's a weird thing to like, you can, there are certain settings you can go into where where you will be recognised, well, it happens less now, but yeah. certainly before, you'll be put, recognised and treated like you're, you, you know, you're someone, I don't know, fam- you know, famous, important, and then you'll go into others a for bank. months and months and no, <laughs> well, no, just normal, like, it, yeah. it's a weird status thing because you, it's, it's, a, it's a YouTube video. You're not famous or anything, but there are some people that will treat you that way. Yeah. And then it's embarrassing because the answer is, oh, what's he from? Which which film's he from? Oh, it's that little five-minute video he made in his bedroom yeah, 10 years yeah, ago. Yeah. And then you sort of, you know, your, 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 I don't know, sense of 
pride crumbles a little bit in that moment and it goes through a thing of going up and down in sort yeah, of bipolar yeah, yeah. sense yeah but it's i mean that that stuff i i it was i did it it was a while ago and then i also felt like i was just i was doing them and it was just kind of slightly it was just the same stuff and um it needed a bit of a break and and also i'm not i think what's interesting is that that did that character did really really well with people that were like that or people that had yeah. gone to that sort of school or exactly had, like my, my school yeah and i i didn't actually that wasn't my background so i didn't and also because i called the character my own name i started to worry that there was a confusion like sometimes i get pitched things and 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 halfway through the conversation you realize that you they think that you're that prat yeah and, and that was a bit demoralizing because you think you've done a clever comedy character and then you realize some people don't but then you you with your instagram uh sketches you've sort of managed to yeah, blend like, them quite yeah, nicely yeah, yeah. It's where it's like the, the kind of like funniest aspects of yourself where it's yeah. not so ridiculous but well, it's still got the bit elements i think now it's just a case of trying not to let anyone know who i am i think it's quite a fun so not 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 let people know where i stand on anything so nothing's political particularly nothing's like well this is where we, we were talking about this uh this is where we're kind of been very different things because your uh, background is sort of character comedy sketch stuff and film stuff and I'm doing stand up where the emphasis is so much about what do you think who who are you mm. um, and um, so I, I guess we just come from def- very different I wish I was in that apolitical thing yeah which is the funniest place to be right now in my opinion it's the place that I'm jealous of because I hate both sides but then all of my my clown, whatever it is, the the funniest inside of me is a ranting Clarkson. <laughs> yeah, but a ranting Clarkson is a, yeah. immediately a character. So yeah, like, yeah, you, so. you, you, you can, I, you I, can I tune... say it's me, and yeah. I say what I think, and that's when I'm funniest. Well, part, Partridge, like, Partridge, very vulnerable. Partridge, uh, Coogan talks about Partridge as being, he's you know all those ridiculous. Have I, sorry, yeah. have I, all those um. Uh, rid- ridiculous things that that character will spout. He says are pretty much like they're they're his they're his first. Th- it's it's yeah. like an adult is someone that's learned to sieve those thoughts. So you have the, that first yeah. thought. You're an adult, so you don't say it, and you he just removes the sieve. So there's a part of Partridge that's him. And so you, do you think my characters are sort well, of Partridge esque? I would say yeah, <laughs> no, but like you know your auth- authentic stand up that's 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 mining truth for funny yeah. um, it, it, from Bill Hicks through to whoever. They're still characters. Bill Hicks yeah. is still a character. He know he's playing a shtick. He's, you know, so, yeah. so, so I don't think it's, um, you can, you can go sit like Louis CK can be brilliant, can be brilliantly insightful, but then he's also incredibly silly. Yeah. Um, so it's, he, that's, yeah, that's why I think I'm trying to head a bit more is mm. trying to like have the, both sides because I feel sometimes I look at my my set and I'll be doing gigs and I'll have like a room and I'll be like it'll be like Nazis paedophiles and it'll be like god I just don't have any other options yeah, yeah. or if someone goes oh great do you want to do this at a paid spot uh, is it fine to work clean yeah and I'm like is it a two minute set like yeah. maybe I can do two minutes yeah. but then, oh, can you do like 20-15 minutes I'm like no <laughs> can you just switch if someone's like because I don't do that. If, if it's like you've got a five minute bit and they're like, oh, actually, uh, Horatio, could you do 15 tonight? Can you just be able to, do, have you got f- a five minute set and then a 15 minute set? No, well, what you do is you can stretch it out. You can crowd work. You can fatten it up. You also have other bits you can throw in. See, crowd work's better. a bit that would, I'm, That's I'm not very good at insulting people. And also, but just also, I'm not that interested. Uh, so what do you do this year? Oh, great. But the best crowd work, yeah, this, that's, the, that's the problem is that I find crowd work, because I, I like MC and I feel when you're doing stand-up, like the best way to crowd work or set a room. The problem I find with most MCs is they're kind of like, they try and like ruin an audience member for the good of the yeah. room. But then if you're doing that across the whole front row, soon you're going to basically have individually upset every yeah. member of the audience. And it doesn't create a nice vibe for the comedian. The best way is to try and create a feeling that we're all in this kind of weird group and we're like try and make them enjoy this moment like we're all this is a very special thing that's happening mm. and try and have people feel comfortable sharing the best moments of crowd work is when you get someone open up about something and then someone else opens up about something and you both have this kind of weird like mm-hmm. it's basically like trying to run a therapy session is the best way to do crowd work in my opinion how do you find you're talking about being your your authentic self how do you because we're both white men in comedy yes. i'm probably quite lucky in not having to do that sorry and not trying to be that because of then I don't, there's nothing like are people interested in an authentic white guy right now is that that's the problem you've but do you, got do you, do a you kind talk- of internal <clears throat> thing that's you at your funniest and you should try and reach that like you did with the character it was like you reach what you know 
the clown school in France would call you a clown, whatever. Mm-hmm. You kind of have to be true to that. And What's that friend. guy called? Mo- Molly? Yeah, that kind of crazy. Yeah, that everyone goes guy. to. Yeah, yeah. Um, just and he's a, like some 10 ha- grand some on hammered. For a week. Yeah, exactly. He's an absolute. He is the con artist of our time. Oh, it's amazing! And everyone comes back and it's like, mummy oh, and daddy have money, do they? Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, you're in. You're in. <laughs> Gollier is um, yeah. Gollier. That's uh, it. Sorry, this is Gollier is a clown silly. school uh, outside Paris, where it's like the French is approached to. They've made comedy as French as possible, which is like knock knock. Is that sort it's of like you're a pastry chef in France, and it's the, that sort of approach, which seems so against what actually is fun. I can't yeah. imagine him really making me laugh, like as a comedian. <laughs> Mind you, I think it's obviously I shouldn't knock it. It's Sacha Baron Cohen. Yeah, through to, a great. Yeah, through to did Jamie Dimitri do? I don't know, but like I wouldn't be surprised. There's a, quite a lot of people from it um, yeah. who, have, who have come from that. Yeah. Um, but uh, so you're, um, something that surprised me is that you're uh, from the Northeast, you're a Geordie and you're a Newcastle fan. Mm-hmm. So how, how, how does that actually work? Well, my dad is from Newcastle. Yeah. He's from Gosforth and then he worked for Northern Electricity. And then he got a job for Eastern Electricity. That's how it, that's, that's how it works. That's it, yeah. to be honest. And so we moved down south and I grew up in a small little town called Felixstowe. That's that's everyone, That's all the questions answered. He worked for Northern Electricity okay. and now he works for Eastern Electricity. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but then he moved back up and became a teacher. So did you, When you said you were a history teacher, mm-hmm. was that actually true? Mm-hmm. You teach history? I taught that, history, yeah. Ask uh, me anything, ask me anything. All right, so you do you actually like history? Yeah. What What do you think is the funniest eras for you? Which Which era do you think gives you the most? The funniest era. Well, I like the idea that everyone basically drank beer as water. For yeah, that about was great. Four hundred years, and that's why in this country. In more this, so, yeah, 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 yeah. No wonder all the all everything happened. Um, funniest era, I guess it's got to be fashion, hasn't it? So, Georgian. I'd like to live in a world where some serious, self-respecting British gentleman. Also powders his face and wears a wig and yeah. tights. That's that's funny. There's because I personally find comedically, I've always found like history to be the, the past is the funniest thing because uh-huh. like, if it happened before, uh-huh. it's immediately funny. Yeah, September the eleventh. Th- but it was in the past. Yeah. So it does have a slight comedic edge. What's the? What, how long can it? Well, it, it's the longer the way. It, so September the eleventh is only going to get funnier. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Like it wasn't funny for like six years, but just, it, it's a tiny just, bit funny now. Four members of my family were in the thing, just so you don't. Go too oh far. really? Yeah. Not really, but that just shows how funny the topic is now. No, because it still would be funny, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah, I suppose. Because it, it, it would be funny if yeah. I brought it up and said it was funny, and then and then four it would have been your... incredibly awkward, and then you'd add some funny material. I don't know. I think I would have rode it out quite nicely, actually, yeah. just digging myself further. Yeah. I should have let you do it. Yeah, um, I think it's about the the the, the time. The past is funny. <laughs> The future is terrifying, mm-hmm. and the present is meh. Boring. Boring. Um, so, what's your fun- what's the funniest period of? I think the first crusade. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. Of course. I think no. I, I think um, yeah. I think the kind of I really like Europe post the kind of amazing achievement of the Romans. Uh-huh. How they were like the most sophisticated empire of all time. They run the whole of Europe, and then the bar- the barbarians were just like fucking, we had enough, and they smashed it, <laughs> yeah, and they yeah. destroyed Rome. Yeah. They sacked yeah. it, they burnt all yeah. the things, yeah, yeah. and they put nothing in yeah. place. And it was it took you ages to make, did it? The <laughs> key. <laughs> and from that, yeah. it built this the kind of like brutal Europe because you know we, sometimes you look Europe has this kind of like cockiness that there's kind of sophisticated the enlightenment the renaissance yeah. all that shit but for a long time we were like the the arse of the world yeah we're arrogant because these <laughs> tiny little bubbles it's like, like oh renaissance poof all, yeah. all this good thing poof for a this thousand is all happening years, in the cauldron of absolute shit for a thousand oh, that years that was good Let's, we're proud of that we poof. were for a thousand years we were um, just absolute scum all of us and then just the rallying cry of people saying, we're going to take back Jerusalem. And then just everyone going like, <laughs> Why? Absolutely. Why? There's nothing else to do. <laughs> <laughs> and I just, I cannot, I do think the medieval period just as a whole is so, because your life was so shit. Yeah. Did you ever do DOV? No, I didn't know. No. But DOV, like, it was. I did CCF and we were supposed yes. to do DFE in it, but I, I, was a, I was a bit naughty. A conscientious objector. I was a conscientious objector, yeah. 
Or it, it, it rains, you set up a tent, you cook shit food. Yeah, and I'm yeah. like, this I, I, was every day in the medieval age. Yeah, like, yeah, waking yeah, yeah. up, uh, you've got like a potato sack yeah. on. You're so dumb. Yeah. You remember, you're like so dumb. You yeah. don't. You think the earth's flat, you can't read. Yeah. You've never left your village. It's just the, the images are more like, to Jerusalem! Ah! <laughs> Four hours later. Ah! Wait, does anyone know where... <laughs> Is it? It's, oh fuck! Okay, that's quite. Maybe you should walk. Like yeah. the, the the practical realities of like, and just walking, and then you, knowing that most of you will die. Yeah. yeah. Send you're, the message. The average age is like thirty. Yeah, yeah. We've just lost. Like the you're an elder. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Literally <laughs> cloaked. Yeah. yeah, we've just lost the battle. Send a message to the king. Four months later, he gets that. Four months. It's crazy how something mental will happen, and you have to have to get any information across. You have to have a dude on his own with yeah. like. Some protein bars or whatever. <laughs> He's got like every aspect of it. Yeah, yeah, I, ca- yeah. I, it makes me gets there. It's like, oh, but do you know what? <laughs> oh. How do you not lose it? Uh, Did you make spares? Yeah, yeah. It was Did something you learn about it? something about supplies. <laughs> uh, fuck. <laughs> I've got it. I've got it. Just give me a minute. Give me, give me, give me a minute. Give me a minute. Oh, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he's thinking, can I go back? No, I can't go back. I'll yeah, take yeah. four months. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, I wish I could just start. Oh. <laughs> No, a breastplate was the breastplate was in it. <laughs> you've got to be learning that off by heart. Yeah, surely you've yeah, got, yeah, you've yeah. got to be. But yeah. then he probably couldn't read. Yeah, well, it's like that guy that ran twenty six miles at what? Uh, what is it? Marathon? Was it the Battle of Thermopylae? Well, that's where the marathon starts from. The guy that just ran with a message. Yeah, twenty six message just be like some. I don't know what the thing. It was something shits happened and then died. Yeah, that, that's uh, the, it, all of it makes me laugh so much because uh, and also I've got a p- picture of. Um, Edward the Seventh, Sixth, uh, who's um, that's, the, that's son. the son of Henry the uh, Edward the Seventh. And uh, Edward wait, the wait. Seventh, so sick. Willie, Willie, Harry, Steve, Harry, Dick, John, Harry, three, Edward, one, two, three, Dick, two, Henry, four, five, six, then who? Henry, four, five, Dick, the bad, Harry's twain, Ned the lad. Oh, Ned the lad. It doesn't give the number. That's I think it's six or seven. He's Ned the lad. Cool, cool little rhyme. Though, yeah, right? Edward, Edward the Sixth. Uh, I have because he's my favourite king of England. Edward. Because all he did was die. All he did was be ill and die, yeah. But you, isn't it hilarious he, that... He just preached Protestant theology from his bathtub. Yeah. With his, Because it, it, wasn't he raised by, like, other men? It was, like, Protestant... Well, he was he was raised by... Um, if, basically, from a hist- historical perspective, Henry VIII changed this country forever to have him. Uh-huh. All he wanted was a son. Yeah, yeah. Literally, our, <laughs> our whole lives... That would be me. Our whole lives <laughs> yeah. are different yeah. because Henry VIII couldn't get a son. Yeah. We are a different religion. It's changed us completely culturally. This whole country... And he finally gets the son and all the son die, does is die of a cult. Yeah. To me, it's like... What like Our whole lives have changed because... What have they, I done? What, to have that man be born... Yeah. Um, what do you think would be different right now if he he'd lived? Well, we'd probably maybe still be Catholic. I'd have some we'd, rose, we'd rosemary beads. I feel it'd be a bit more. There'd be a bit more. I think we'd be. Um, we'd have collaborated with the Nazis, probably. We definitely would be Nazis. I think we would be part of the kind of more European yeah. and be more, less of a power. Yeah. That we'd kiss each other on the cheek. Yeah, yeah. There'd be a lot wow. more kind wow. of like yeah. sophisticated. We'd eat outside. There'd be more oil and vinegar and yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um, but w- while teaching history, mm-hmm. um, did you did you find um, how did you find you were with kids? I love well. I'm one of five, so I've ha- I've got younger and I'm a bit older than the youngest. So uh, I sort of yeah, I really like I like hanging out with children. That's probably needs qualification. Clip it up. Yep, clip but, it up. Uh, I do. That's going to be one of those uh, viral clips. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And um, it was fun. I was teaching medieval history, and I was teaching it to. 11 to 13 year olds so if you just tell a if you tell a good story it's and it's got blood blood, blood and guts and stuff then they're 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 wrapped and surely it's, it's like for me i'm like how can you make yeah. it boring when well it's... the corn laws and stuff like that when they're teaching 17 year olds isn't particularly interesting yeah. but the, the rough domestic policy yeah, of like Wolsey and stuff they yeah. do um but do you have any favorite periods that um mm, not no, not, big not fan. really. I think I like. Yeah, I like the brutality of different ages. So, like the Ro- we were talking about the Romans earlier, but the idea the idea of decimation, where yeah. when everything go- anything goes wrong, you just kill one in ten, 
of your uh, or one in a hundred or something mm. of your, and and they they would willingly step. For, I would like to uh, that sort You'd of. You'd like funny. that kind of mindset. Well, I just like to see how, like, of course, yeah. So the, the, the concept of so falling on your own sword, or allowing that to happen, is sort of interesting. But it's meant. It's like in. I've heard that in like the Chinese military, like it's like low down recruits will happily lie down in the puddle so the officer can walk across without having muddy boots and just to be in that mindset yeah um, face which... down in the puddle <laughs> yeah. this is my greatest honour serving my nation <laughs> yeah. and just thinking you, of yourself as a big we're so like individual now yeah. it would be like why am I in the puddle yeah, I yeah, should yeah. be with the, yeah. the boot I've got rights <laughs> 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 I'd be so good in the military. I'd be so bad in the military, sorry. Um, but I think I'd enjoy it for a little bit. I did it at school. C CCF, CCF, yeah, we CCF. talked about CCF on the pod. And um, it was uh, it was sort of fun pretending to be a soldier. Like you got to learn how to strip a gun and how that to how to sniper fun. someone. But then you never actually did it. And well, then, you, yeah. you never actually went on the front line? I never, I was not once on the front line. <laughs> were you a bit disappointed? M loads of my friends were, and I was, just, <laughs> I was never sent. You were never shipped out? No, I would, I'd be very much, I'd be, I think, I would hide under bodies if I was in war. You know, when they cut and they, they do that thing. Oh yeah, so whenever you see those things, yeah. all of us, we must think, whenever you see a historical re a, like a film and... Medieval battles, they all come out and they, they often get their wives to chop the dicks off and put them in the mouths, like horrendous things. I've not seen that, but that's... that's yeah. like the, 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 they used to have then, to a further insult, they would just get like oh these old kind of like, kind of like lunch lady looking women who just kind of get out and just like, like it's everyday business, pop it in the mouth. Oh. Um, horrendous stuff. <laughs> Why are we doing this again? <laughs> <laughs> it's just fun, isn't it? Um... And, but we've all thought, well, how would you cope in the war? Would you play dead? Yes. And, but then they come round stabbing. What are you doing when everyone's getting stabbed on the way? <laughs> <laughs> oh. I would make sure I was... I'd make sure... Okay, what would I do? So the pile's here. It's all the bodies and then the Russian tanks just... Are they just piling them up? <laughs> So you're, you're the thinking World War Two now. You're, this is not. Yeah, we're in Stalingrad or something like okay. that. Okay, and I'm under a, a bunch of them. You're a Nazi. I'm not, clearly I'm a Nazi. <laughs> yeah. but, okay. but it's not so my we're both fault. Nazi. We're yeah. both Nazis. We're both obviously Nazis in this yeah. situation, and I'm lying there thinking, "Oh fuck, was I the bad guy?" <laughs> yeah. And um, that's a good point. How would you get out of that? I guess that's the. I would have to. That would be the last. It would be like this is my best option. I just hope I don't get stabbed. Or that, they, or that they're like, you know when you do a bit of a shoddy job when you're like, because you must have... Just been, twat! Oh, if you're huh? <laughs> Fuck off, twat! Go, go on. <laughs> if you're the guy who's like doing all of that, like the traumatic job of like yeah. stabbing like a thousand people who yeah. might... May, there's going to be some that you do in a shoddy sense. Do you know oh what yeah, I mean? of course. I, I wouldn't so you're looking. just hoping that yeah. you've got that chance, I think. I Honestly, if I was doing that, I wouldn't look. <laughs> And I try and well, or I would well, look to try and stop yourself being traumatized. Yeah, well, that's gonna stick with it, that isn't it? <laughs> yeah. like, and then suddenly one starts wriggling. It's like, oh fuck, 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 fuck! Shut up! Horrible. Uh, I think Stalingrad best best battle of all time. It's up there. I'd say top battle. It's up there. It was pretty intense, wasn't it? Numbers wise. Numbers wise. It's like Ronaldo. You kind of like a Messi. You kind of like you have to just look at the stats at the end of the day. The pure stats, yeah. The pure numbers. A lot of people died. It was like is that eight, the is that the is that the mark of eight hundred K Nazis was it um, one point one million Russians I think. I think I can't even I can't even visualize. There's so many people in one battle. If you told me eight people died, I'd be like, oh my god, eight people. <laughs> yeah. But then one million like that, don't you? Yeah. One one point one million, you're like, doesn't. Yeah. Well, then you died in company, so it's yeah, exactly fine. yeah. It was um, so horrific. You had yeah, you yeah. were sort of in it with others, so it's less bad. I'd say that's up, up there as some of the top ones. Yeah. Um, uh, I drew a penis on you. Yes, I did see. I saw, and it was a very big, bald penis. Yeah, with a small thing. little. Yes. Um, I can show for the camera. Yep. So that everyone can see. Um, this is his choice, and you, you kind of I, were they meant to be pubis, or is it sort of an exclamation of like it's a, a big sort, shiny ball bag? I used the pubes to do that. I'm glad that that came across. Yeah, but they are they are pubes. Um, and so, so how, how how much podcast experience have you had with, of going on other people's pods? <laughs> Some, 
Because I, I saw that you went on the True Geordie podcast. Oh, yeah, I did do that, yeah. He's massive now, isn't he? It's huge. Was, was he not big back then? No, he, well, he was a... He was a football. He was. He did a video about Newcastle, I think, and uh, got big. And then I started doing stuff with Spencer Owen, and he was um, the football guy that does hashtag United. Mm. And he did stuff. And then I kind of didn't really pay attention. And then suddenly, he's got this massive. It's huge. Yeah. He's got this like the media. He's he's true. Jordy's kind of like you see those sort of content men who just have that sort of like. You can just tell they can run a media empire. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? They're like, oh, he was, he was, they're like he friendly mafia dons. Yeah, do you yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. he's got a little bit of that Rogan energy yeah. of like, they just kind of like, it's a mixture between being super manly and also probably really good at admin. He said, like, I remember meeting him, oh, sorry, I remember meeting him on that podcast and he he was spouting stuff about Joe Rogan and what, and wanting to emulate it. And I remember being like, oh yeah, good luck. He's sort of. He's sort of the British sort of version has, of it. Yeah. Um, oh man, maybe I should get back on that and get some followers. Oh, you definitely, man. Because mm. with with um, how could you do? How do you find the whole kind of marketing side of it and having to like? I hate it, and I'm uh, <laughs> I'm not very good. But that expect that extends to like I don't know how to I don't know how to do a swipe up on Instagram. I don't know I don't know what TikTok is. I don't know. Yeah. So I'm not very good at it at all, and um, I'm quite responsive. So like I'll do I'll I'll, I'll go on things if I'm asked, but yeah, I'm not like. I don't have a strategy for that at all. And also, well, I sort of did. It kind of happened organically until <laughs> COVID. Yeah. Um, and things are slowly coming back. But yeah, I mean, I've been on a few few of them, I think. Yeah. Um, it's just conversa- how many conversations have I had? That's all it is, isn't it? Well, really? this is the problem is that I've, I've done so many episodes of this now over a, like a year. And it's quite like a... a war- it, it's quite a psychotic job, I feel. Like, it takes quite like a unwell. Doing comedy or hosting a podcast. I think doing comedy for sure, uh-huh. but I think hosting a podcast where you sort of ran with very little plan, like twice a week almost, yeah. and just keep talking shit yeah. as if there's new stuff to talk about. I don't yeah. know how I keep talking. Well, I think it's what you, I think the idea of just having no particular theme is quite good. Yeah, because I, I, I you started I, with your thing, didn't you? But. I start with a thing to get people in, but yeah. I don't really listen to podcasts that are like about maybe some football podcasts if I have like a, mm-hmm. but I won't regularly listen to it because I just kind of don't like the British podcast tradition of. Well, it's, it has to be a thing. It's yeah, like, it be, like surely you, know, you, 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 like you listen to the person. Gay you... builders fix yeah. South American domestic policy. Like it has to be like. A I'd host. listen to that. <laughs> okay. I mean, I'd as soon that. as that came out of my mouth, I was like, that's too good idea. To <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. 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 No, I, I don't listen to anything. I listened to Serial once and then I was annoyed at the end how it didn't sort of wrap up. Oh, one of those true crime things? Yeah, it was, on the, it was the first one. I Never think. really got into those nah. sort of true crime things at all. That's and, then, really. and then um, Atletico Mints. Yes, Bob Mortimer brilliant. is the funniest man in the country. I'd say he's probably one of the funniest. I think, sure. I think naturally the funniest man in the country. Um, for, for you, um, uh, who would you say, who are you got? Have you listened to Mark Maron podcast at all? Uh, back in the day, I think Barack Obama was on one, so was around that time I listened to it because I was like, "Oh, that's a pretty." Because he's big like catch. the the kind of one of the big podcasting kings for like the hard hitting sort of solo interview where you really unpack famous people uh-huh. and one of his famous things is like, "Who are you guys?" And it's like, "Who do you?" He's talking about who do you listen to, but who who are your guys in a comedy sense? Uh, I don't really have at the moment any that. I, I, the ones, the, the the influential ones yeah. for me growing up were, um, or it was more like, it was more shows. So it was, it was Malcolm in the Middle. It was, yeah, because your stuff's more like screen acting and stuff. Like I suppose, yeah, acting. I suppose so. But it was always so. It was like Zach Braff in yeah, yeah. Scrubs. It was, um, yeah, Scrubs. It was, Sandra it was, it was, it was, it was Homer and uh, Hal in Malcolm in the Middle and Homer in The Simpsons. It was those sorts of characters, and then stand up the. We were talking about this the other day. Like I've I've grown up in a similar sort of tradition as you have, which is that you like comedy, and so you know quickly what cool is and what you're supposed to, you're, what you're well. supposed to like. And so I've you know people people like Stuart Lee who are brilliant um, with the, with the sort of names I'd rattle off, Louis C.K. those sorts of yeah. people. But I mean, we were saying this the other day. I sort of was caught unawares at one Christmas watching Michael McIntyre live at whatever and it was on these big shows and felt like laughed like belly laughed like three or four times yeah and had a slight reappraise of like do i do i is this just because someone else has told me this isn't and i know it's it's sort of slightly easy 
family stuff that they talk about, but it's still a skill. It's still it's impressive to make a room of people laugh. And so I'm slightly less snobbish than I used to be because I used to be quite particular in like having my list of people that I would say, which probably weren't even it wasn't even true. It was just me trying to like sound right. And so um, uh, here's a controversial one: the, one of the best stand-ups I've ever seen was Bill Cosby's grandparents' um, routine. Um, when you say controversial, it's not controversial well, in the sense. He, no, no, no. The quality of his. Great, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's kind of that's contra- one of the big parts of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No one's like yeah. it was a shit. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. like the big reveal wasn't yeah. that everyone was like. Here, I rate Messi. I think he's. <laughs> I think he's a decent footballer. All right, just get off his back. Um, so uh, and and then uh, yeah, uh, who in stand up do I? I mean, the uh, Dave Chappelle. I mean, it's anything that's sort of put on Netflix at the minute. Bill Burr I used to love. Mm. Um, but I, I think the, the point we were talking about um, is, I think a shift that's happened in British comedy is because you came up, which is, I have a, a st- slight nostalgia for that 2010 era because I, I have quite a lot of friends who kind of grew up and that, that was when I was at school. Yeah. And it was kind of seen like this kind of weird time just post the financial crash. Yeah, yeah. Where it was like this kind of weird time to be it, it kind of froze in time, this kind yeah. of long period that, um, and I think during that time, there was a lot of anxiety about um, how good something is coming from the kind of Stuart Lee mm-hmm. critique mm-hmm. of Russell Howard and stuff. And I think yeah. recently now, because everything's so fucked yeah. and people, it's so hard to get money yeah. anywhere. You can't, ha- it just seems dumb now to say, oh, actually, you have options, yeah. you know, oh, I'm just going to write this amazing show yeah. as opposed to doing adverts as if it's like a choice. Yeah. Um, well, I it's like we, talk, we yeah. talked about this the other day and I know Stuart Lee, you're a big Stuart Lee fan and obviously I am as well, so I'm not knocking him, but that thing that you talked about was in one of his autobiographies where he was talking about this great new stand-up and real promising and, and, so, and, so, and so on and so on. And then I was really disappointed because I saw him in an advert on TV and I was like, fuck, you know what? And it was that lack of, we've talked about it, that, that generation that came from the sort of punk two fingers to Thatcher yeah, authority. Yeah, yeah. They've not realised that there's a, the generation that, you know, we those guys were, they were able to, they're on the dole. You know, they had a, a, a sort of significant dole because they and were And they had the government, it was like an artist's fee. Back yeah, in yeah, those yeah, sorry, periods. That's, yeah, that's, right, that's what I mean. There was so like it's this that, weird plus, like, thing where they were like... It was unbelievable. Well, um, what's he called? Alan Davis made the point. He was like, it was, it was weird doing comedy because you know, the woman that we'd get up and all rant and rave about was the one that had sort of secured policy for us to be able to like be paid to do what we do. And um, so, but it's it's an entirely different world. You have to do that stuff. And again, I remember Coogan sort of semi-bragging on an interview about turning down a million pounds to do a McDonald's advert as if that was like, well, good on you for being authentic. It's like, what a situation you must be in to turn down a million pounds. Crazy. Because you don't quite agree with how, you know... Whatever it's just you have to have more than a million pounds to turn down a million pounds. Yeah, you have to have quite a lot. You have have to have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If you had a million pounds, could you turn down a million pounds? Well, most people. uh, No, I there's. I can have any amount of money. I'd still say yes to a million pounds, probably. Right now, because I'm so unfamiliar with lots of money, feels like. But are you really different? I can't, 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 can't conceptualise a million as a little. You yeah. can't even conceptualise. Yeah. You'd still have that yeah. scarcity yeah. mentality. Here's a hundred million, and then here's a million. <laughs> it's just, it's just, just lots of yeah. money. Yeah, it's just big. It's like when you show a kid like 10 5 P's it's and like, one pound coin, they're like, I'll have all of that, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> My mum's. <isn't... laughs> um, so, yeah. Uh, and and you're right, yeah. I, I guess a lot of my people that I prefer are like funny. I like funny bones. People that you, you, yeah. you there's some people that are in something and for a split a split second you're like, I know he's going to be funny. I know I'm going to like him. It's like someone like I really I really like Will Ferrell, and I think he yeah. kind of gets viewed sometimes. It's kind of a bit trashy, but I think he's just one of the funniest. Like yeah, he's just got a funny face. Yeah, and it just like well, that funny- em- funniness emanates off him. Who is it that plays? Um, it's the guy in the thick of it. That's like fuck this. I'm going for a Twix. Um, Oh fucking! Uh, what's his name? Pete, um, he's, uh, I've been trying to—I can't remember his name. Was but... it Bull, uh, the Baldy one or the long? No, he's the conserv- He's the Conservative Minister. Oh, amazing! Yeah, and it just with the floppy hair. With the floppy hair, yeah. but again, like, he's in lots of stuff. W- within three, I remember when I first saw him, and uh, yeah, he's, exactly. I can't, I can't yeah. believe I don't remember his name. But um, within a few seconds, it's like I know that I—I I know that he's funny. Whereas you get some people that are brilliant, ju- like you wouldn't look at Stuart Lee or he's not funny both. Yeah, you wouldn't you listen to him. You wouldn't, yes, exactly. And you're not yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not tearing up on a podcast. Yeah. Bob Mortimer is my guy. There's your answer. Yes, Bob Mortimer is my guy. Yes, that's that. That's kind of the point we're getting at. Yeah. Um, and you know, Stuart Lee probably is still 
would be my guy mm-hmm. um, though I disagree with a lot and it's like the funny thing because I think Stuart Lee's so good and he's and he does stand up in a way that I think is so great and I find I genuinely find really really funny mm-hmm. but then whenever he talks about other comedians mm-hmm. he always just says the shit as comedians <laughs> yeah but <laughs> or he like says he'll slag off a comedian who's like mainstream who I quite like yeah. and then he'll say like a real good one and then he'll say something yeah, I'm like yeah. no that shit yeah. Stu yeah. or he'll be like oh no oh great I remember in Edinburgh when he was kind of like threw up in a bucket yeah, 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 yeah. it's like it's just not the same now it's all just big venues yeah. it's like Stuart that sounds awful mate. <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Sounds, oh, yeah. Oh, do you remember do you remember the, the, the circuit do you remember the circuit like it's not like nowadays all these kind of shit yeah, trash yeah. Comedians. Do you remember, the, remember the ice man yeah, yeah, remember yeah. the ice man yeah, and yeah. I hear about the ice man well all he did yeah. was he'd carry a block of ice and watch about the stage yeah. Stuart that sounds like absolute garbage <laughs> and also yeah. don't fucking and I'm saying this with love because this is the weird thing with Stuart I'll go and say he is my favourite but also I have a lot of um, disagreements with him don't fucking like look at young comedians trying to make some money by doing like a comedy show that yeah, is like yeah, yeah, not yeah. the most like Dadaist thing and yeah, then yeah. have someone who gets paid on the on taxpayers money yeah to literally just melt a block of ice with no <laughs> yeah, ambition yeah, yeah, to do yeah. anything yeah. that's clearly no one enjoys. Causing, causing nostalgia for the next 20 years. This <laughs> yeah. bunch of like, oh, Knuckles McGiven. You, 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 you needed to see him live. God, it was yeah. unbelievable. It was, um, he, he, what you do, right? You play God Save the Queen on recorder and then have a shit on the other pages. <laughs> yeah. It was mental. It's like, and that's not... But if I was there, if, he, if, if, if Stuart Lee said that to me, I'd be like... Mate, I have to see that. This sounds so <laughs> yeah. fucking good, man. Well, of course, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's, yeah. Um, but I just think when it, it's so funny that whenever he, um, whenever he just dis- goes to describe all these things that he, it's funny when you slag some what you think comedy shouldn't be, and then say what you think comedy should be, it has a lot of pressure on it, and yeah. it's always just the most garbage. But it's also stuff. it's just it's difficult to, when you're in when you're trying to be a comedian to start pontificating about what it should be. You feel a little bit of like I don't know. And he clearly does self. It. Well, exactly. He does yeah. It as well, yeah. But what I like, I like Stuart Lee because Stuart Lee, people talk about him like he's this sort of like they kind of treat him. The negative critique they kind of give of Stuart Lee is that he's sort of like this um, really snobby, kind of powerful member in the industry who like um, is just so up himself. But I see him more as this kind of like he's almost like a gangster rapper. Yeah, like he calls people out. Do you know what I mean? He's like he's like a shit talker. Yeah. I think people because he's such an intellectual styling and he feels like there's there's elements to him that feels like the kind of cultural mainstream in a yeah. way. I think he's more of just this kind of like fuck you rapper who's just like going two fingers to everyone. But the, but there you go. That's the, we were talking about it earlier. It's that's he's created a it's a he's it's it's a similar it's like Jack D being uh, grumpy one day and then that's his act yeah like Stuart Lee is authentic and him whatever blah 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 but he's it's also an act and so like I'm pretty sure in reality he'd be lovely to all brand, like I don't know the guy from from Adam but like I'm sure he would be great to everyone he'd be lovely supportive and but then when he was on stage it's a, it's a different thing it's not necessarily reflective of him I don't know I've, effect- I've heard I've heard stories about Stuart Lee that make me laugh quite a lot because he's I think he I think he just kind of struggles to know how to fit in and kind of does a lot of social faux pas. He's not like this really. Oh, like, I like him. I like him. Do you know what I mean? Now. He's yeah. kind of like this. He's this weird sort of ghost in the industry who sort of like moves from green room to green room and just like doesn't quite know what's going on, but then does the best to hand up. And it's like <laughs> yeah. this weird. He's kind of weirdly out of the industry, but then sort of haunts the industry in yeah. this kind of strange way. Um, I, haven't, I haven't seen him in years, to be honest. So I can't. Shouldn't comment, but he is the face in the crowd. When I used to do stand up, it was. Yeah. I just see a sea of him just going. Pff, and that was a problem for me. And then f- I think the more you do stand up, the more you respect Michael McIntyre, basically. Yeah. The, further, the more gigs you do. 100%. Yeah. And from starting out saying this rubbish, as he's yeah. like destroying the Wembley, like everyone's well, laughing. Well, I said, to, I said the other day, that, um, I, did, I, sh- I, was, <clears throat> I did a music video with some people the other day and it was a, we're driving back and in the car it was me and then three or four like 20 year olds and very cool, you know, or appeared it at least and Coldplay came on the radio and they're like, all of them were like oh and turned up and we're singing all the words now I'm a, I'm attuned to like fuck Coldplay yeah but I don't I, I love Coldplay but I pretend I don't like Coldplay. Coldplay and um but it was the weird it was the first time in my life where like that I don't know the the effect like I, I grew up with Noel, Noel do- Fielding and people like that being like fuck Coldplay Coldplay is shit so it's like okay it's cool to not like Coldplay that's gone and now all the cool kids like Coldplay it's very the world is is meaningless 
Well, that's I think that's what's happened. It's is a that... flap of the carpet and it's all new again. Yeah, but we, it's not. We're not even going through like a clear era. It's like this. It's a kind of a nothing space where it's just redoing the old stuff. But with 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 the way that the the young guys um, sort of played Coldplay, was it done with a mm. irony at all or no, a post no, irony? No, 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 because I don't think they're aware that it was ironic to like to not wow. to like Coldplay. That's only that like, was only four stunning. years younger than me, and I that still <laughs> yeah, a shock yeah, yeah. to me. So I don't know, maybe no, I, 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 to be honest, you might just be in a car with some fucking losers. Let's be real. Yeah, <laughs> this yeah, yeah, story yeah, yeah. might be. I like, just made the I, whole thing up because I love Coldplay. Yeah, yeah it's like uh, there's some cool dudes. Yeah, yeah. You know, they were like yeah. you know Ben Sherman yeah. shirts. There was, it was, it was <laughs> yeah, like they were like they're proper cool dudes. You know, and then Nickelback came on and they no the um. No, but I, I would say uh, maybe I'm, and I'm not. Sure, but there is a four di- four years difference. There's more difference in that age range. I think there is between, like they've. Ju- hang on, maybe, maybe I've got their ages wrong. And they're probably going to watch this. They're all lovely, but um, probably won't watch this. You, you said that a couple of times. It'd be amazing if they managed to watch this. I've got a lot of pull. Do you think you've got a huge yeah, pull? Yeah. Um, Ask me how many followers I got. How many followers you got? Under fifty thousand. Under 50,000. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. So we're in the same... 50,000 is a big number though, isn't it? Yeah, it's huge. Yeah, and we're both in the same bracket, yeah, which yeah. is the... I've, been, I've got none. I've, I, Insta- you do Instagram, don't you? Yeah, but not as... Um, how yeah. do you get... Follow- how do you share things? How do you How do you galvanise support? You do- on Instagram, it's impossible. <sighs> I've been putting all my energy into that one. Yeah, but you've got, you've got a fairly decent amount of followers. Not for the energy I've put in. <laughs> I guess not. Over the years. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel that as well. It's like going through, but then it is like the most important one in many ways. But that's what annoys me. Like I follow people like you and or whoever, and it's like, oh, okay, cool. And every now and then you realise that you you've got this other thing, and that's where all your main stuff is, like TikTok or. That's not what the main stuff is. That's kind of like a machine that you chuck. It's like just like putting coal in an engine and just letting that shit roll. But Instagram's where you like mm. can actually meet people and stuff, and like it's like a base. I feel it's, it, it feels cooler. Yeah. And it's and also like um, Stuart Lee chatting shit about social media, Crazy. and like well, no, back in the day, he back when I was this basically year. Stuart Lee's just slightly annoyed that it's not forever nineteen eighty five. Yeah, exactly. That's uh, and he's he's annoyed that Thatcher's not in power, so he can't be in his in his boots and kicking stuff and spitting on people and cutting their face with yeah. his with his mohawk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what Stuart Lee wants. Because uh, do you hear him talk about his favourite comedian ever, Ted Chippington? I have heard that. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's one of those sort of. It's in the it's in the the bit where he talks about the block the melting block of ice. Yeah. Who was that guy? I don't, I, he was like a he was like an enigma that disappeared. What or something. Ted Chippington? Yeah. Was, yeah. Well, Ted Chippington, when he, whenever Stuart Lee's asked who was his inspiration, like you said, Bob Moore, I said Stuart Lee, and then of course Stuart Lee says my inspiration was the guy who was opening for the Fall, uh, the punk band that in nineteen eighties, a uni gig, and he bombed, and he just told this terrible joke over and over again. And he was like, it's the best thing I've ever seen. I was like, it's true, that sounds awful. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if it's because, you know, you have like Monty Python and it's hilarious. It's the when, rock and roll aspect. But it's, but it's also in the 60s, it was hilar- a man playing a woman, a working class person yeah, yeah, in, yeah. A, in a role of authority. Are you, this is, the, this is, this yeah, is world changingly funny. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it was something written into the culture and, the, and the, the context of the culture. Maybe Stuart, maybe the 80s, I don't know, I wasn't there, but maybe there's something about the kind of, we're so saturated with people doing things that are unexpected or silly or like Anti. an, anti-authoritarian or yeah. whatever that it's the, not the, the power of that yeah. doesn't work. It's why like even, you know, all those mid 2000s films that Seth Rogen and everyone are constantly apologizing for because they realized they could get done <laughs> where it was just, it was gross out swearing and like sexual humor. And I mean, that's completely and utterly gone. It's just because it's been done. And it's, but it's been done, yeah, it's boring. Do you find any of the trends that you've noticed in comedy where you think... Like, I guess I wonder if there's going to be a re... But, you know, maybe in the late 90s, but pre The Office, there was a bit more flamboyance and silliness to go with the sort of hedonism of the 90s. Yeah. Then The Office made it all about realism and subtleties and performance. And it's kind of the era we're kind of both from comedically. Mm-hmm. Um, I felt like that sort of defined such... I mean, David Brent still appears so often, mm-hmm. even though it's been so long. Um, and then it was like the post-Louis, Louis the TV show, which is like the mixing comedy and drama. Uh, comedy for social change, comedy, you know, blending them. It was art like, as well. Cause it was yeah, so it was hard. art. Comedy became about quite on the nose discussing politics and being good and having a real moral edge and I wonder now if 
after all this shit, we could maybe, you know, Biden's in power. So Trump, the Trump era is over. Do you think there might be a rebirth of like silliness? Well, I, what do you, I was always, what do you I was always coming in the... I always thought that art is best in times of struggle. So, uh, and that's like a, uh, you know, is that your quote? Uh, no, it's, it's my quote. Yeah. <laughs> no, but it's an accepted, it's an accepted thing. Uh, I don't know the poet, the, the the world or one poetry in the trenches or Guernica by I'm literally struggling to reach Tom things. Gray stag do Tom Gray stag do during, <laughs> during the Iraq War. <laughs> Just now, um, he's very good on Instagram, uh, so you can follow you at your handle, which is like a child's handle. Tom Gray eighty seven. Yeah, it sounds like you're commenting on Daily Mail articles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It sounds like you, you literally looks that. like you've got an England flag in your. Well, I call my character my own name, so I wanted some <laughs> anonymity. Yeah. So I use my use my own name with a with a with a couple of numbers. Yeah. <clears throat> is there anything else they can find you on Twitter's Thomas James Gray G R A Y. You do a podcast with your brother? I it? did. Yeah, I stopped doing that because okay. it's just it. But well, we, 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 no, no. Uh, that's cool. No, you don't need to listen to that. That's finished. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. It, I, 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 I can't choose I your podcast. I've forgotten the name of it. So, <laughs> so that was useful. It's a football one, though. Um, but now we're going to go. I think has been a ghost that's been hanging over this whole podcast, as it is the elephant in the room. It is the England Germany. Oh, what's the time? Well, it's fine. We've got plenty of time. I checked. Uh, we've got an hour and a half till pre-match build-up. Can I tell you my joke that I put on Twitter today? Go on, go on. Uh, my cab here was a German. Uh, uh, Uber driver called Alice. So was he a good driver? Deutschland Uber Alice. It's good. Stay silent for a little bit longer. G- Germany, very Alice. Deutschland Uber Alice. That's the song. Deutschland, Deutschland Uber Alice. German, 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 German. I did German, German, German for like three years. I didn't know the national anthem was had Alice in it. I thought it means all. Deutschland Uber Alice. Oh, I didn't. I, I'm not that well acquainted. Did it do well? The the first one is the first one. The first one doesn't is the first one. The first one is the first one. The first one is the first one. Now I remember it. Yeah. Yes, it was that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Did um, did it do well? I got twelve likes. <laughs> <laughs> but I did it on the way here. So, so if you want some like red hot um, things like that, then follow follow Tom Gray on Twitter. Um, and yeah, we we've we've done well to avoid talking about England journey because I can't think of anything worse than hearing about too much about the game mm. when the world you'll be listening to this can be a very different world. And I think we have a naive look because yeah. either it'll be one of the best, everything's good, or a huge world changing event will happen between now and Friday, and no one will will want to watch this. It's true, yeah. I mean that's the problem. We we, we record on Wednesdays and shoot on Fridays, and like the Trump people, they stormed the Capitol. Wednesday evening while we're recording, mm-hmm. so we're putting it out, we just look like we're like we just like the biggest event happened, and we're <laughs> yeah, just yeah, like yeah. we're just talking about. Yeah, there's cool. not really much going cool. on. <laughs> do, you, do you like cornflakes or do you, <laughs> or do you prefer yeah. frosties? <laughs> um, but thanks very much for coming on. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. It's been a real pleasure. Uh, it's good to get guests back on Boys Gone Wild. It's good to touch them again. It's mm-hmm. good to have people in my bedroom. And thanks to the team. Uh, mm-hmm. Thanks to the whole team. Uh, thanks for the studios. Uh, for is, is the exit the door just? What is it, 175 uh, metres that way? Yeah, you go out and then uh, I'd recommend the lift because there's okay. a lot of steps. Um, well, 60 floors up. Obviously. Yeah, yeah steps. so, um, and then I'll, I'll meet you in the bar on floor four. I'll, cool. to, I'll have a, a debrief with the guys. Cool. And do I say, uh, do I give your stage name, which is Horatio, or your real name? Um, let's reveal my real name. Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.